O oh, Sun God, you who put your path in heaven's stars, mounted on a chariot, inlaid with gold, and whirling out your flame with swift horses, what an unfortunate beam you shed on Thebes, the day that Cadmus left Phoenicia's realm beside the sea and reached this land. The city of Thebes has been widely celebrated throughout Greek mythology and served as one of the most frequent settings of ancient Hellenic theater and literature. However, beyond the clouds of myths and legends of the heroic times, laid one of the most prominent historical Mycenaean palatial centers. This is the history of Thebes and the Bronze Age. Ever since Stone Age, the region of Boeotia has been inhabited by the Neolithic population. These early inhabitants do not appear to have originally settled the site of Thebes itself, but rather the neighboring settlements, such as Orchomenus and Eutresis. Just like elsewhere in Greece, life in Neolithic Boeotia was largely agricultural and included farming, cattle herding, hunting and fishing. Besides stone, clay and similar materials, obsidian was also in widespread use, being utilized to produce various tools and weapons. It was notably imported from the island of Melos, a major hub of obsidian production in the Aegean. Production of pottery as well as jewelry had Boeotia one of the leading places of the Neolithic culture on the Greek mainland. The arrival of Bronze Age towards the end of the 4th millennium BCE brought technological advancements to Greece, as well as surplus of its population. Subsequently, in Boeotia, the towns of Orchomenos and Eutrasis continued to harbor significant settlements. In addition to those, the site at Thebes would also rise to prominence, becoming one of the largest in central Greece. Since literacy was absent on the Greek mainland during these prehistoric times, we are left with very little evidence of how these early inhabitants called themselves. Even in Greek mythology, they are described as some of the earliest and most distant inhabitants of the land. In the mythological accounts, at a time before Thebes itself was founded, the region was inhabited by several autochthonous tribes, such as Actaenes and Hyantes. The Actaenes were ruled by a primeval king, Ogyges, the country being named after himself, Ogygia. The Actaenes thus controlled Ogygia until a time of the Great Flood. Greek legends describe the Flood, also known as the Ogygian Deluge, as a devastating and catastrophic event. Not only Boeotia was devastated, but all the other regions, including Attica, which was also ruled by Ogyges in several versions of the myth. Either way, following the flood, the new settlers appeared in the region, led by hero Cadmus. Himself reportedly being of Phoenician origin, Cadmus was said to have been confronted upon arrival by the guardian dragon that protected the nearby Insmanian spring. After losing some of his companions to the dragon, Cadmus was eventually able to slay the beast and erect a citadel which he named after himself, Cadmea. The tribe of Hyantes, which still reportedly occupied the area at the time, was thus pushed out and dispersed into Phocis and Aetolia. Although Cadmea persisted as the name of the citadel into historic times, the city itself, which was built around it, became known as Thebes. Theban kings Amphion and Zethus, who came several generations after Cadmus, were credited with building the Theban fortifications and naming the city after Thebe, the wife of Zethus. Alternatively, the city was named so in the earlier generations after the daughter of Zeus and Aeodami, which was given in marriage to Ogyges. In each case, Cadmus was generally recognized as the city's founder, and Thebans themselves were often called the Cadmeans. The ruling class of the city, known as the Spartoi, also tracked their origins to the Cadmean myth, to the men which sprung from the ground as Cadmus sow it with the feet of the slain dragon. Greek historian Herodotus estimated that Cadmus lived 1600 years before his time. 
Herodotus lived in the 5th century BCE, which would roughly place the reign of Cadmus and the foundation of Thebes to year 2000 BCE. The historian also credited Cadmus with the introduction of the Phoenician alphabet to the Hellenes, resulting in the creation of the Greek alphabet itself. However, we do know that this wouldn't have been possible, as both Phoenician and later Greek alphabets date to a much later period. Even the Linear B script, the earliest form of Greek writing, which predates the alphabet by more than 600 years, only dates to the 15th century BCE, a time much later than the supposed reign of Cadmus as described by Herodotus. Either way, Early Bronze Age lasted from 3200 to about 2000 BCE. By the end of that period, Thebes and Orchomenus were indeed the chief settlements in the region, each controlling a network of satellite towns around them. The Theban ruling class seems to have yielded considerable power, residing in large buildings at the settlement center. But who exactly were these early princes? Were they the descendants of the primeval autochthonous inhabitants, presumably dating all the way to the Neolithic age? Or champions of a new culture that started emerging in Hellas by the end of the 3rd millennium BCE? Or perhaps both? When it comes to archaeology, we do know that a new style of pottery appeared by the millennium's turn. Today, this pottery style is known as the Minian ware, as it was initially discovered in Orchomenus, home of the legendary Minians of Greek mythology. The Minian ware, however, was not restricted to just Orchomenus, being produced across central Greece, including Thebes, but also in Peloponnese. It was produced in several varieties. The grey Minian ware was largely made in central Greece, but was also common in Peloponnese as well. The black or Argive Minian ware was mostly produced in the northern part of the Peloponnesian Peninsula, while the red variety was commonly found in Attica, Boeotia, Aegina and the northern Cyclades. The appearance of this pottery style likely signals emergence of a new culture which was shared between these regions. Archaeologists consider Minian ware to be a continuation of the burnished ware of the Tyrans culture dated to an earlier period, to about 2200 BCE. Unlike in the previous times, the people of this culture especially emphasized fortifications, weapons and war. These people are believed to be the direct ancestors of what we today know as the Mycenaeans. In Thebes, the ruling class of the city noticeably became wealthier, which can be seen by their burials throughout the Middle Hellenic period. The leading Cadmeans were now buried in individual cyst graves together with their jewelry and other precious items, the symbols of their wealth and power. Most of this wealth likely came from trade as it intensified throughout the Aegean Sea, specifically with the island of Crete. The Minoan civilization was at the height of its influence, the rich and illustrious palaces spanning all across the island and beyond. The Minoans acquired and maintained their wealth through intercontinental sea trade network which spanned across eastern Mediterranean. Their cultural influence was thus strongly felt throughout the Aegean Sea and especially on the Greek mainland. This helped Thebes as well as other settlements to prosper for centuries with little to no interruption. Eventually the accumulation of wealth as well as influence of the Minoan palaces started transforming the Middle Hellenic culture in Greece. The foremost settlements of the continental Hellas at the time were those on the Peloponnese, led by the city of Mycenae. By the 18th century BCE, Mycenae became the most powerful citadel in Orgolis and likely controlled the core region of the Achaean Greeks, which also included Tiryns, Medea, Argos, Asini and Cleonae, among other important sites. Over the course of the century, Mycenae became a powerful, well-fortified and wealthy palace center, 
the pattern of which was soon to be followed by all other major settlements in Greece, Thebes being among them. A palatial center was typically concentrated around an elevated and well-protected citadel, which was heavily fortified with cyclopean walls. Inside the citadel were the most important administrative buildings, workshops, storages and residences of the ruling class and other nobles. At the center of the complex lay the main palace, and inside it, the Megaron. Megaron was the great royal hall complex consisting of the entrance room fronted with two columns, and the great hall surrounded by four columns which included an open heart that went up through the oculus in the roof and the throne of the palatial ruler. The palace center controlled all economic aspects of the land under its jurisdiction. It managed the production, kept storage of all relevant resources and dealt with their redistribution according to its needs. In Thebes, its citadel began emerging in the 17th and 16th centuries BCE and was on a much smaller scale than that of Mycenae. It is believed to have controlled several surrounding settlements, such as those of Eutrasis, Tangara, the port of Aulis, and possibly the large site of Glass connected with the drainage project of the nearby Kopais Lake. Kadmea was centered around the commanding position of its south hill. The hill was also the location of the royal burial sites. The lavish tombs contained luxurious items, jewelry made of gold, but also spears, swords and other weapons of the Theban nobility. By the 16th century, cemeteries were also built on the surrounding hills of Ismenos, Agia Anakolnaki and Castellion. In the next two centuries, Thebes continued to grow, with its own palace center developing in Kadimea by about 1400 BCE. Shortly afterwards, Thebes, along with other cities, is apparently recorded on an Egyptian inscription listing the important cities of the country of Tanayu, which is understood to mean the land of the Danaeans, or the Mycenaean Greece. On the mortuary temple of Pharaoh Amenhotep III, the inscription mentions Mycenae, the port of Nauplia, the island of Kithara, and the regions of Messenia and Thebes as important locations within Tanayu, signifying that Thebes was already among the most important Mycenaean centers. When it comes to the relationship with other palatial centers of the time, there is no direct written evidence, although it does appear that Mycenae exercised a level of sway and influence on most, if not all, other palaces of the time. The architectural style, the same pattern in which all the centers were built, the same road network spanning from Peloponnese to the rest of Greece that connected them, and the apparent absence of wars and destruction between the palaces, all point to a sort of alliance, league or confederacy that existed in the Mycenaean Greece, headed by the Wenex of Mycenae. This was more or less confirmed by some of the foreign written records, namely those of the Hittites. The Hittite monarchs maintained correspondence with what they called the kings of Achaea or Achiawa, who they often referred to as brothers and great kings, equals in power to the great empires of the Bronze Age. Hittite names Achaea or Achiawa represent the rendering of the Mycenaean Greek Achaewia and later Greek Achaia, meaning the land of the Achaeans. By this time, the once flourishing Minoan civilization of Crete was subdued and became part of the Mycenaean world. The linear A script of the Minoans was used by the Mycenaeans to develop their own writing system, the linear B. In Thebes, its Cadmean Acropolis was fortified by the Cyclopean walls, and by the 13th century, a large palatial complex was constructed on the site. It was clear that by this time, Thebes became the most important site in central Greece, second only to the great palaces of Peloponnese. The Theban palace facilitated a large workshop, which produced luxury items, gold jewelry, agate, quartz and lapis lazuli. Besides locally produced items, there were also imports from as far as eastern Iran and Bactria. 
The Armory of Thieves was built in the eastern part of the complex, being a large rectangular chamber with numerous small rooms, together with a network of narrow corridors. The armory was used for production of weapons for the Kanmean soldiers and tools used by the palatial artisans and craftsmen. The northeastern part of the Acropolis was the location of the Kanmean treasure room. It was built with large stone blocks and stored quantities of gold and various other precious materials, as well as the Linear B tablets which were used to keep records of the room's contents. The same was the case with another facility separated from the treasure room by a thick wall. This was the so-called room with the jars, characterized predictably by the large quantities of jars which were stored there. In the western part of the citadel lay the wool workshop. It was made of three rooms containing various pottery, stirrup jars and vases. The workshop was decorated with colorful frescoes and its wool was to be typically processed with aromatic oils and then delivered to individuals of high standing both inside Thebes and across other Mycenaean palaces. The summit of the Acropolis was home to a densely built complex of buildings that overlooked the city of Cadmus. Its preeminent location, as well as its size and extensive decorations and frescoes, suggest that it served as residence of the ruling class of the city. By the 13th century, a large Mycenaean chamber tomb was built on the hill of Castellion. This was accomplished by merging of two of the existing burial chambers. The main passage was 25 meters long, 4 meters wide, and 10 meters high. The chamber itself was 11.5 by 7 meters, with 3.5 meters in height. According to geographer Pausanias, the chamber was constructed for the legendary Theban rulers Eteocles and Polynicus. The two brothers had a tragic fate, being cursed by their father to forever fight for the Theban throne. The quarrel resulted in Polynicus being expelled from the city and fleeing to Argos, which then waged war known as the Seven against Thebes. The brothers thus fought on the opposing sides, both tragically falling in battle. Greek legend has it that the subsequent generations of the Argives, known as the Epigoni, did manage to defeat Thebes, kill Eteocles' son Laodamas, and install Polynices' son Thersander on the Theban throne. It would be the same king Thersander who initially led the Theban contingent of 50 ships to Troy, joining the Achaean coalition under Agamemnon of Mycenae. The Theban ruler unfortunately met his end in Asia Minor in the early phase of the conflict, which eventually led to the Achaean victory and Trojan destruction. Unlike the wars of the Epigoni and Seven against Thebes, for which we have no evidence beyond Greek mythology, the story of the Trojan War did have roots in a historical conflict that occurred around 1200 BCE. The details of it are very blurry at best, wrapped in myths and legends of epic poetry and made immortal in Homer's Iliad. The result, however, was confirmed by archaeological and historical evidence. It was indeed the destruction of the city of Troy. However, the destruction of Troy did not appear to bring much prosperity to the victors. The Mycenaeans themselves were on a severe decline. By the 12th century BCE, the palace centers across Greece appeared not only to face economic uncertainty, but a grave threat to their very existence. What exactly happened to the Mycenaean Greece remains poorly understood to this day. What we do know is that in a matter of just several decades, most of the palatial centers were destroyed and abandoned. Some of them would take centuries to recover, others never to be resettled. The palace at Thebes did not escape destruction. Cadmean Citadel was destroyed by fire at the beginning of the century, marking the end of the Mycenaean period in Thebes and the general collapse of the Mycenaean Greece. Moreover, the great civilizations of the time were either severely weakened or completely destroyed in the connected and more broad series of events known as the Collapse of the Bronze Age. 
The Egyptian sources managed to record a vaguely attested sea confederation known as the Sea Peoples, roaming through eastern Mediterranean and bringing an end to civilizations such as the Hittites, Alatia and Ugarit among others. The Egyptians themselves managed to defeat the invaders, although they were severely weakened themselves. The relationship between the Sea Peoples and the Mycenaean collapse is not crystal clear. We do know that the Linear B records of the city of Pylos do record an imminent sea attack on coastal Peloponnese shortly before Pylos itself was destroyed. The Linear B script thus fell out of use and the literacy was temporarily lost to the Greeks. Whether these invaders were Greeks themselves or the outsiders remains difficult to determine. Accounts of the ancient Greek tradition record the so-called return of the Heraclidae. An invasion of the successors of the legendary hero Heracles, aided by the Dorian Greek warriors from central and northern Greece who invaded Peloponnese and displaced the ruling Achaeans. Likewise, the rulers of Sparta, Messenia, Argos and many other Peloponnesian city-states of the historical times all claimed Dorian Greek lineage and descent from the legendary Heraclidae. In Thebes, the Cadmean palace might have been destroyed, but both Cadmea and the surrounding communities continued to be inhabited. Slow and gradual recovery took place throughout the subsequent Greek Dark Ages between 11 and 800 BCE. Eventually, Thebes did re-emerge as the most prominent city-state in Boeotia, still centered around the Cadmean citadel and still claiming lineage of legendary Cadmus. Our episodes on the Bronze Age will continue, so make sure to subscribe and click the bell button to get notified on the upcoming content. If you wish to support the channel further, feel free to join us as an exclusive YouTube member. This way, you will help the channel grow quicker, upload videos more frequently and keep increasing its quality. In return, you will gain access to the exclusive videos, artworks, updates, polls, ability to decide on the future content, and more. This was 1XTV, and we'll see you again soon.